Joining us now, North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer, member of the Banking and Budget Committees. Senator Kramer, great to see you, sir. Um, great to see you. So there's a few tidbits in the air, a few interesting headlines, a few interesting developments. I think you're on the Budget Committee. What do you, what do you think about all this? Well, Larry, first of all, I think having listened to your monologue, that about all I could add to this is to screw it up. So I'll try my best not to because you said it beautifully. But none of this surprises me for a couple of reasons. One, I know Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin really quite well. I consider them close friends, and they've been very consistent. And in fact, they've been very consistent throughout their careers. And while the Democratic Party has drifted so far to the left to be unrecognizable, the two of them have remained right where they've always been. Mm -hmm. Reasonable, smart, modest, and, and by the way, people who represent the people of West Virginia and Arizona, they're a lot like the people that they represent. So I'm not surprised by it. What surprises me is that anybody's surprised by it because they aren't used in this town. They're not used to people with this much conviction sticking to their guns. They're more used to transactional people who are willing to sort of sell their principles, uh, you know, for the right package. And, and both Joe and Kirsten, I think, have been an incredible example up to this point, at least, uh, uh, of people with great conviction. And I applaud them for it and appreciate them. Well, we all do. You're right. And, you know, I'm look, I'm not privy to all this insider stuff, but mm -hmm. the more I read, Senator Kramer, the more I read, and, and I talk to some of my pals that I used to work with in the White House who cover this beat regularly, legislative uh, type people, mm -hmm. I think they've been telling this to Biden and the other leaders. A lot of the leaders in Biden just didn't want to listen. They weren't taking it seriously. And now, mm -hmm. you know, I read this stuff. I mean, it's really, it's really just jabberwock drivel. The left-wing media, Washington Post and others, well, we're going to make a deal with Manchin, and then we're just going to roll cinema. And I scratch yeah. my eye, I go, huh? or how about this? So we're going to now tax unrealized capital gains, or we're going to have a big wealth tax. And as you know, Kevin, this stuff was floated before and completely shot down. So they're going to be a trillion dollars short, even in static terms. So I just, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how, now I'm starting to think this could never pass. Well, it's interesting, Larry, because, and the only way it could pass is if they change, you know, sort of the narrative and move the goalposts. Remember, there's a big difference between paying for something and saying it doesn't cost anything, which is a narrative that I've, I've never quite understood when the president insists this costs nothing, you know, just because they can identify a pay for it. The other thing is, as you pointed out, there's a lot of budget gimmicks that you can use that embed the the, the policies, which, by the way, are worse than the massive price tag, because policies are forever. Yeah. As you know, it is very difficult to turn back a, a welfare program or an entitlement program that gets embedded, if even for a short time. So you can mess with the price tag. But but these these tax policies, I mean, the, you, you mentioned the uh, unrealized gains. That That's their latest effort at trying to disguise this as something other than a tax increase. But uh, the other thing I think we have to remember that's really important in our exceptional system. And while these two are certainly at the forefront of saving America, 50 Republican senators have never flinched, blinked, or stepped back. We are united in our opposition. We need everybody on board. But the real key, Larry, is that the American people are experiencing the ramifications of really bad public policy coming out of this White House. This inflation is real. It's not transitory. It's big. Um, you say what you want. I don't care how many times the, the Secretary of Energy says presidents don't set gasoline prices. No, but when they cut production in half, they definitely, they definitely manipulate the markets. Um, you know, open borders, uh, this supply chain problem. This is squarely in the hands of, of Joe Biden. It, it was he, he, him and his, his all this free money. You know, the first two trillion, remember, from March, not one penny of that's paid for. All of that's borrowed uh, on the backs of future generations. Th th that increases in, in an artificial way demand without a supply to meet that, that or, yeah, the, the demand without a supply to meet that demand. In fact, shrinking the supply. So he's the cause of all of this yes. disruption in our economy. You're still, and the American people know it. You're still 2 million barrels a day short right. on the oil right. front, right? We were doing 13 million right. barrels a day plus pre-pandemic. Now we've been stuck at 11 million barrels a day. It hasn't even moved. 
now that economic demands have gone up, it still hasn't moved. Uh, the rig count, I mean, you're from the Dakotas, you know about this stuff. The rig count has come up just a teensy weensy bit, and the demand has come up hugely. So, what happens? So, crude oil prices go up, the Saudis are not going to help us, the Russians are not going to help That's us, right. and then That's gasoline right. prices go up. It's not that hard. Right. You know what I heard? One, one other quick end of that. My pal Betsy McCoy, smart lady, wrote a good column in the New York Post the other day. The Longshoremen's Union out there in the uh, LA and Long Beach ports, A, they opposed a 24 7 schedule to unload the containers, and B, Senator Kramer, they opposed any of the labor saving new machinery and automation that should be operating in these ports. They just, the unions opposed that, and guess what? The Bidens knew about it and didn't lift a finger. Didn't lift a finger. No, no, that's exactly right. But by the way, mechanization has always replaced humans when, when humans can't do a job. So if you're going to not do a job, you force the issue of whether it's autonomous vehicles or robots or whatever the case might be. In this workforce shortage, see, this is another downside of these of these policies. This cradle to grave, um, you know, government taking care of people. Uh, it, it, Agenda that is part of this big, uh, this big package. This has long-term permanent ramifications in so many ways, in so many layers uh, that, that it's hard. It's hard to comprehend. And really, what I like to say is, and I, it pains me to say it, but Marxism is at our doorstep, mm. Larry. And that's why what we're going through right now is a big, big deal. And Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, God love them for hanging in there with their convictions. And I hope that I hope that uh, they're rewarded for it. Last one, real quick, Senator. Is uh, Joe Manchin going to join you in the Republican conference in the Senate? Well, you know, every time Joe Manchin does something that we all love, he does remind us occasionally he's a Democrat. I, I don't <laughs> think he will. I don't think he will, Larry. And I think it's fine if he doesn't. Quite honestly, we need we need moderate Democrats and we need people that can be bridges across the aisle. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I, I, you started getting there with talking about Mark Warner and some others. Mm -hmm. These aren't the only two reasonable Democrats. They're the mm -hmm. only two that have been at the tip of the spear. Mm -hmm. But there, there are other Democrats. And I, what I hope this teaches us is that we need to work together for common sense reforms and then fight like hell when, when, when they're wrong and, and stand up against it. But uh, Joe Manchin's the same guy, whether he would become a Republican, remain a Democrat, or be, be an independent. He's the same guy. I think he should run for president and primary Biden. On behalf well, of blue well. dog Democrats everywhere, moderate Democrats, go ahead. You should do it. I might be surprised how well that works. Anyway, we got to jump. Uh, Congressman Ke uh, Senator Kevin Kramer, thanks very much for your insights, sir, as always. Thanks, Larry. Always a pleasure.